Welcome back to The Line. We just heard from journalist Jeff Proctor, who co-reported two stories for the Santa Fe New Mexican on investigations of police shootings. Eric Rigo, do you think New Mexicans want changes in investigations of police shootings? That, that question Sarah put to him at the end there. Is there a hunger for this now, something different in the, in the populace now? Well, I think... How could we not? You know, yeah. how could we? How could we, as a community, when the folks we look to to, to, to protect us, um, there are uh, there, there may be a, just a small handful of them, but who really are uh, to the point where every signal they're getting from the courts, from their leadership, from the police oversight, um, is that you know, look. Um, you are not held to the same constitutional standard that every American is held to, which is the most fundamental right we have is the right to life. When you can be judge, jury, and executioner for folks like uh, Mr. Boyd who, who, uh, who had mental health issues and you can choose in that moment and that you cannot be held accountable, then I think it gets to the, it gets to the fundamental democracy. Are we as a community, as a nation, going to hold everybody to the sta same standard? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to say if you're this guy or if you're this group of folks, if you're, the, if you're a, a law enforcement officer or if you're an elected official, you get a different set of rules. But if you're out there and I do something like that, right. um, I get to be treated like, like uh, everybody else, That's right? right. So, so it's, it's just, um, it's really, I think it gets to the heart of our democracy and our constitutional rights. And I think this is unfortunate. You know, Randy McGinn mm -hmm. is one of the, the, the most highly regarded trial attorneys in mm -hmm. the country. That's right. If she could not, I was shocked, if mm -hmm. she cannot bring back some sort of sanction, sanction in this case, right. she teaches people how to do trial trials like this, and she uh, she could not get based on what they were given to her, you know, and and, right. and it was like it was like trying to practice law in a in in a third world sort of environment right. where she doesn't have this the, the basic legal, uh, you know, the basic legal opportunities that other cases have because you know we're going to treat these guys separately and we're going to mm -hmm. have them sort of protect each and other. And I, I got to tell you, I sadly Please. have got to hear what Eric says and and not for an argument's sake, but I have to disagree with Eric. Ahead, yeah. Here's why I have to disagree there. The question was, do we want this? Yeah. I don't think the people do. I think the people, I think it's kind of like, you know, the poll about Congress. Everybody hates Congress, but they're like, they're congressmen. Yeah. I think everybody thinks the cops are doing the right thing. Nobody wants to question the police officers because they think about who's going to be there when I make that 911 call until it affects them. Then when it affects them, there's a small group that says, listen, I'm angry. And I think it shows that, in my opinion, in this trial, there was nothing that could have been more damaging to the police department than the killing of this young man uh, with clear mental problems, the comments that came out in the media, things that were said. Uh, you couldn't walk these things back. Right. And you still wind up with a hung jury. Right. I mean, if there was ever going to be an example of a case, a as a non-lawyer, that you would say, you know, this is not, we're not just relying on somebody's story That's or right. some, some person that was injured or a drug dealer. I mean, they, there was actual tape evidence that didn't make the police look very well, and we still came with a hung jury. So right. I, I think, you know, we can sit around the table and, and rail against this and talk about constitutional rights, and, and I think that's a big question. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the public, um, I think the public overwhelmingly, uh, and this, this may not be the right way to say it, I know you guys and the people in the booth will cringe when I give that caveat, but I think the public is willing to give up some rights in order to feel totally protected. I think it's no different than the war on terror, where we give up rights every single day when the federal government says, hey, we're going to make you safer, mm -hmm. and we acquiesce these rights, and we turn around and we look around and we never get them back, mm -hmm. all because we think we're a little I, bit I safer. I would a that. little bit agree and a little bit disagree. I, I really feel that over the past at least 10 years, and, and, and really, I think, longer, there has been um, a persistent drumbeat about danger on our streets, danger in our communities. Um, I think that our police departments have participated, have fostered that because it helps to build their budgets and helps to justify expenditures. There's been an increasing swatification of our police forces. Is that a word? It is now. <laughs> swatification of our police Trump forces. Trump said it. Right. Um, I, I think the launch in communities across the country of um, social media that is tied to um, police departments, where police departments are collecting information, and, and, and this sounds paranoid, but it's just that I can't remember the name of the, it's, it's home something or neighborhood or something like that. 
like that. But, you know, many of us are, are signed on for social media sites where we report on crime in our own communities. Next door. Next, Next door. door. Thank Next you. Door. We have created this incredible storm of fear in, in our communities when in many cases, I mean, it doesn't feel like this in Albuquerque right now, in New Mexico right now, but in many cases we are much safer than we were. Certain types of crime are certainly down, and yet we have this terrible fear. I feel that Albuquerque has crossed a line from I trust the police to take care of me, I want this increased police presence, to now in many parts of Albuquerque, a fear of the police, it has gone too far. Hmm. And and I think that's an important tipping point for us. The question now is, can we dial it back? Is there the political will to put civilian oversight with meaningful power over our police departments? Is there is there political will to say there has to be accountability? And it's not just the Boyd shooting. You know, the Daily Beast has just reported again on that terrible, essentially smothering death that happened in Rio Rancho. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have too many instances in our small, tight-knit community. And, and I, I gotta say, it's really noticeable, especially in a community like Albuquerque, like Rio Rancho, how often the people who are subject to police violence in this way are people of color and we cannot and, bef and I think before we start talking about giving the powers to an outside organization, which I'm not opposed to, I think that the police are gonna have to have a mea culpa and decide that they want to clean themselves. Mm -hmm. I think this inability okay. of the of the police. You know, I, I've had this conversation with many people before, friends of mine that are police officers. Dan, not all of us are bad, and right. and my response has been, listen, I, I I hear what you're saying, but I think there's, in my opinion, there's really two types. There's the guys committing the crimes that are police officers, and the guys that are ignoring it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't see these people running in the forefront saying, you know, listen, I worked with her. We don't see the whistleblowers. She, you don't, we don't see, see the whistleblowers yeah. in the That's police right. department. Very, very seldom, and, very And I seldom. think that until that starts, I don't care what we do with outside people giving them authority, yeah. I, I think until you are gonna be able to, to get these guys to police themselves and hold themselves to the same standard that they want us to hold them to, right. with the same authority we give them, yep. it's never gonna change. Fair enough, Janice. Well, um, and I, I think we are at that crisis moment within the Albuquerque Police Department. There are really good police officers mm -hmm. who welcome, I mean, nobody wants to shoot anybody. Thank they you. don't wanna do that. Yep. And if it happens on their watch, they want a review to make sure they didn't make mistakes and to be exonerated as much for themselves as for anybody else. How does that play in the public's mind, though? It, can the public see and feel that, though, what you're describing? Well, I, actually, I, I think I was so surprised when the ruling came out. It was a 9-3 split. Right. So clearly, they felt that the police officers were in the right. I have been amazed at the number of people that I thought would say, oh, that was terrible that they didn't convict them. And I have gotten exactly almost 100% the opposite. I was really surprised. So, but the other side is, is this part about interaction with the police is actually a small part of what they're doing. And right now, I just came from a neighborhood association meeting, the amount of property crime as a result of heroin and meth is so horrendous. Right. Uh, people are losing their cars. Did you see the, the, hija uh, the carjacking at San Mateo and Central? Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. And people want police there. Yeah. And right now we have nobody stepping but up. Where is that line, Eric? I, I, everybody here, I, I hear what these cats are saying for sure and out in the public too. People are nervous in yeah. our town. How does that work with giving a little fudging on the idea that civil liberties somehow it's okay to kind of I take a step. You I know. think it's hard. Mm -hmm. Part of civil liberties is, you know, the democratic and the judicial process. And if you're basically saying you're going to ask some of the best product prosecutors, first of all, to recuse <laughs> themselves because they have this sort of really incestuous relationship with mm -hmm. law enforcement, mm -hmm. then you bring in someone of, of, of Randy McGinn's caliber and you give her limited facts to, to, I'm sorry, you could, you know, like they always say with the right. grand jury, you know, you could you can indict a ham sandwich, ham sandwich. The other thing is also true, which is if you don't give a prosecutor the tools that they need to do what they need, because right. essentially you, you feel like you're taking on your, your allies in mm -hmm. terms of fighting crime. I think there's a much more basic comment, and Sophie mm -hmm. sort of got to this point, which is if you grew up in this community like I do, and uh, it depends on who you are and where you live. If you're a, a guy with mental health issues, like Mr. Boyd was, if you're a person of color in this community, right. um, and, and look at the statistics, if you live in certain parts of this city, mm -hmm. you have to accept, and sadly this is something that happens all across this country, but even in a community that, that, that treasures this diversity, like there are 
there are certain things that will happen to you, and, I, and this is real for me because we got pulled over constantly as kids for doing nothing. Right. And so, and by the way, they weren't always, uh, they were, they weren't always officers of a, of a different race. Right. There's a culture in the department Fair and enough. in many departments, mm -hmm. whereas sort of we're above the law, even when we do stuff like this, and I'm sorry, Keith Sandy didn't think about whether or not, gee, I don't really want to kill this guy. He would, I mean, if, if you look at what we've talked about, it looked like he was really into what he was mm -hmm. doing. He That's might have been true. mad at the guy. Right. You know, Mr. Boyd did some terrible things. Right. He also had serious mental health issues. Nothing, nothing justifies the epitome of a public servant who's on the front lines choosing to take the life of someone who pays their salary, someone who is an American who has constitutional rights because they feel like they they basically are above. I mean, the Gene, line. I, I gotta I gotta give the I gotta give the in twenty seconds if we can. Uh, uh, Mr. Boyd graduated from the same high school that I went to in Cloudcroft. Mm. I mean, we got to think about this. We had this hearing, we had this jury decision, and yet we're paying millions and millions of dollars to the family, and all of this is a man has lost his life because he had a knife and he decided he wanted to sleep. He, he wanted to camp right. actually right. in a park. That's right. And um, you know somehow. That's escalated. I mean, it's, we're not talking about a standoff where we've had these conversations before about people mm -hmm. with things in their hands and all. We're talking about a homeless guy that wanted to sleep, that's, that wanted to sleep in the National I Park. Appreciate the he perspective. Got killed. Exactly right. That's all the time I have on that one. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll discuss proposals to make colleges and universities into Mexico's sanctuary campuses.